Yo, what's going on? What's good? What's good? Man, I'm telling, I cannot complain at all. Yeah. Awesome. Well, shoot, we gonna go ahead and jump into it because we're not gonna wait for anybody to hop on. Are we good on my end? I can hear you. Yeah. So, if everybody in the chat, can y'all hear CJ okay? Just before we get started. I take it as a yeah. Shout out to my guy. <laughs> Shout out to our guy, OG Brando, in the yeah. chat. What's up, man? Oh, so, we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Fitness for the Soul podcast. I am joined by a previous guest who's been on this show before for Health Tip Friday Lives, who will be blessing us again uh, with her unique information regarding digital real estate entrepreneurship and i hope that y'all get blessed by the information and the gems that we're going to drop to y'all today so uh before we get started and before i let her introduce herself just to give y'all some quick quick housekeeping items so one the replay will be available on here and on youtube and the audio will be available on apple and spotify podcast following the end of this following the end of this episode and as y'all know, we are here to spread health, wellness, business education to our communities, y'all, as a black and brown community specifically. So that's the purpose of this podcast and this information. So again, I hope y'all get blessed. If y'all have any questions, in the comment section, or you can throw them in the little question icon here at the very bottom of your screen, and we will try to get to them either at the end or is if it falls in line with what we're talking about in that instance, then we'll go ahead and bring it up then. Um, so without further ado, CJ, thank you again for gracing us with your presence today. So I'll let you go ahead and talk everything that you want to tell the people, talk about Vision Digital, Smoke Break, whatever it is, and then we'll just get right into it. Bet. All right, bet. First of all, thank you. Thank you so much. Happy to be back a second time. Dope. And actually, we're talking about some different stuff. So I'm excited. Um, just to give you guys, I guess, just a beginning where I started. Um, met and really, I put in, and I was studying basically new flags. It was called something different <laughs> for new, but basically user experience um and that just revolves around any type of digital anything make sure making sure that it's like easy and usable for your customer right and so um from there while i was there my entrepreneurial like journey started with smoke break and that at the time was honestly just like filling a need right saw a lot of people around me like weren't getting a specific thing and so i was like you know what let me try my hand at it let me try a little better um, and it worked out great. Like, people loved it. It was awesome. Um, and a little bit after that, I decided to move really just to get away and like see new stuff, experience new things. And um, so, yeah, decided to move, move to Vegas. And that's really where everything took off, right? Because uh, that was the first time I actually saw a slump because we had to go online from like in person. And so it was a lot with figuring out like how to take this thing online sales dropped i ain't even gonna lie to you sales drops um and so it was really like navigating that and figuring out like how can i make this best how can i make people feel more comfortable and that's really what kick-started the whole digital real estate thing because i learned so much about that with rebuilding my website you know i don't know anybody group started with smoke breaks you always for me but like that was a long time ago i've done five maybe five, five different websites i think just for smoke break right and one to change something, wanting to play around with stuff. Um, and so from there, it grew. I just started like, like networking with people online, made some really good friends, met some cool people, and they taught me a lot. So then I started getting into uh, digital real estate in the sense of like selling online, right? Getting into landing pages and funnels and like how to market yourself and all that. Because as we know, like it doesn't, like don't get me wrong, a good product is good, but if you can't market a good product, who's going to know? Like, so can't nobody buy nothing if they don't know that you got it, right? Um, and so then it really just became a That's passion that. for me because I know, a, yeah, a lot of people have a, a struggle with that. Like they don't know how to tell their story or how to put it out there when it comes to like online stuff because it is a little bit different. And so, yeah, I don't want to ramble too much, but yeah, <laughs> that was. <laughs> I appreciate you for for the background. So I think one of the first things I want to ask you is uh, regarding marketing yourself. So the common things or common pitfalls that you see what entrepreneurs doing when they're trying to market themselves and really get their story out there and get their brand out there. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing I would say is 
selling, like selling, 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 instead of creating a brand, right? And it's actually, I don't even say creating a brand, instead of adding value. Like a lot of people, when they first get online, they're right. just like, okay, I have this product. Let me put a flyer up. Let me tell them I'm going to sell. Let me, but like, people don't see it, right? Like, they have nothing to connect to. So I think a lot of people just don't do enough due diligence with, uh, like, just putting content out what the market wants as opposed to just putting their, their like product out there and hoping people like buy it or expecting people to just buy it you know what I mean when they don't really have any connection with it so that'd definitely be the first one um I think of another one. Oh, there was another one it was related to that too I lost it well while you think about that I'm gonna just pause you real quick and yeah. if y'all haven't seen the one when I talked to OG Brando we talked about this very exact same thing that a lot of people get caught up with chasing money yep. and, you know, trying to generate revenue, but they're not adding any value to their customer base. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. Y'all heard it here. I know I've said even before Brando got on, so this is probably the third time y'all hearing it from me. Focus on what you can do to add value to your customer base. Because at the end of the day, money is attracted to value. You're not going to get yep. no no dollars in if you're not putting any value out. So uh, I'm glad that you highlighted that, but go ahead. I don't know if you uh, found out what your, your second thought was. Yes, I, I to that. It, yeah, yeah. It was um, doing the market research. That's like, that might be bigger than providing value, right? And it, it goes hand in hand. It goes along with it, but it's like, actually like figuring out who you can sell to, right? Like what problem are you solving with your product? And then like, who is going to benefit the most from that solution, right? And that makes marketing so much easier. And I think that's really why it seems so difficult. It's because a lot of people just don't know who they're, they don't know who they're targeting. They don't know who they're actually selling to. And so taking the time in the beginning, and it doesn't have to be long. It does not have to be a long drawn out thing where you're like researching for three weeks. And like you can, but honestly, a solid day of just looking through Amazon, right? Looking through social media, like people are complaining all day about things that they don't like or things that they do like. And so, like, use that information to market your product as well. I would say those are definitely the top two. Top two. All right. I'll, I'll say when it comes to market research as well, I want not let that be a hindrance to you to start because there's also a lot of dope analytics that you can drive, especially from, like, I know it's on TikTok. They'll tell you the, the gender, yep. the demographic, the age range, like, who's watching your content and that way you could develop content that will tailor toward those people. Right. So I would use that leverage tool too. If you're doing market research, don't let it discourage you to start. Um, I know some of the best advice I got, some people get so caught up in planning that they get analysis paralysis and don't take the action that they need to. Sometimes you just got to put your content out there, see who rocks with it, who doesn't rock with it. And if you see a certain demographic is rocking with that content, then tailor your content to fit that demographic. Um, so definitely don't let it to be a start, but, Outside, with, when it comes to market research, what are some things that you would recommend that people do first um, in regards to identifying that? I know you mentioned Amazon and, and things of that nature, or just watching social media, but like, how does that really tell you what demographic you need to be targeting? Right. So there's definitely a bunch of ways to go about it, right? The easiest one in the beginning, if you already have an audience, ask them. Like, quite simply, put polls in your uh, story. You know what I'm saying? Go live, do a Q&A. Like, that's the easiest way, and you're getting real-time feedback. Because, like, these are people that already follow you, already interested. Like, they're going to tell you exactly what you need to know. So that's where I would start. Um, if you don't have an audience yet, then that's when you kind of lean toward, like, Amazon. Amazon is the biggest marketplace of anything, right? It ain't a lot of people who don't know what Amazon is and who don't have an Amazon account, like, it's just not a lot of people. And so that can be a really good one. And you would just search your industry and search for it, right? And look for products or uh, if it's a service, look for like digital products, right? And look through the reviews. Look at the uh, two and four star reviews, right? Because those are normally, they still like or dislike the product, but they'll tell you exactly why. So really look through all of them, but a four star will be like, you know, this was really good, but it was missing this one thing. Um, same thing with the two star. It'll be like, I would give this one star, but it did this well. You know what I mean? So um, definitely right. those two. What else? Uh, forms, right? Reddit, Quora, those work well because people are on there asking questions. So same thing, just searching your industry. I literally do this like every day. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, social media was another one. And really any social media. Facebook is great because they have groups. 
Those are, so those are already people that are like congregating in one area. Um, and you can same thing. Use the search bar, man. Go in there and type like, I need help with. Um, how do you do whatever? And all of the posts where people are asking questions will pop up. Look through them. Look through the comments. See what people are asking. So it really just is about like getting where people are and seeing the stuff that they're talking about. Because that's all this over the internet. It's just people talking about stuff. You feel me? So get in there. Write some stuff down. Find the, the uh, what am I trying to say, the patterns, right? And then those are normally the ones that, that um, work the best, right? Because they cost the most. So that's what I'm saying. Most definitely. And there's one, one thing that you said that I want to make sure that the audience takes away. And that is the fact that looking at reviews of products that may be similar to yours. I mean, this is just a good investing tip. This is what I do when I'm looking at investing in a company on the market where it's like, I'm going to look at the worst reviews possible just yep. to see what people are saying that are negative about the company before I park my money there. And it's, it's even the same thing with trying to develop a product and doing market research. You want to know what is the negative that people are saying so that you can always keep that in the back of your mind and see if it outweighs the good that they are offering. Yep. So definitely want to keep that into uh, consideration but i do want to talk to specifically about the digital or kind of shift gears a little bit and talk about the digital real estate and why that's so important for entrepreneurs especially uh today and so i was just wondering if you could just highlight that a little bit more what is digital real estate and why should entrepreneurs be considering it right so digital real estate is kind of broad but basically like any I don't, it's not owning but any area of the internet that you own and i say own quotes because like you don't own your instagram account you know what i'm saying like instagram owns your instagram account so um i guess any space that you can take up on the internet that's how i'd explain it right but this is social media a website um any type of community right like discord groups that's digital real estate um and the reason why it's so important i would say is because like at this point in time attention is currency it's really crazy i saw a video earlier that was like, you could get approved for a credit card based on your followers. And I was like, what? Like, that's insane. You know what I'm saying? So we are definitely pivoting toward, like, like influence. Like, that. that's a big thing, right? How are you impacting the world? How are you um, reaching out to other people from other places? Because, like, you're putting yourself in a box, quite honestly, if you're only thinking locally, right? Because we have social media. We have Google. We have the Internet. There, there might be somebody like uh i don't know somebody in another country that could be benefiting from your product but because you don't have any digital real estate right because you haven't established yourself on the internet they don't know they're missing out on a solution right you're doing people a disservice literally by just like not putting yourself out there so i would say the number one thing is really just your influence and impact like that's why digital real estate is so important because you you need that space and i would add this might be a little off topic but Going back to what I was saying about not owning your Instagram account, that's also why it's so important to have like your own website, right? Or your own email list. That's a really important thing because if Instagram shut down tomorrow, what you gonna do? If you got a million followers, you are gonna be sitting there crying because you lost a million followers. <laughs> like that's it, that's point blank. And so I think that's really important too, is like when you start, make sure that you're establishing like these other areas where people can interact with you off of like off of platforms that you don't own, right? That way you can you can keep that control or at least just keep in contact with them if anything happens. Man, uh, that was definitely gem pack. I, I wanna make sure that I sh emphasize the fact on attention as currency and just so that you guys know, and this could go into the factoring when you are developing your your online brand and social, pre social media presence is that the average human attention span now is like under 10 seconds. So that's really like the time you have to, you have to capture your audience or capture somebody that's interested in your product. And if you can hold them for longer than 10 seconds, then you're actually, you're doing something right. You're that's doing something right. right. That usually means that that will lead to more follows. That could potentially lead to more sales. Mm -hmm. But all in all, you want to make sure you're developing content that's going to captivate your audience for longer than that 10 second window span because people will either swipe up, swipe left, whatever the case is, after mm -hmm. those are up if you haven't picked up something that they can really draw, draw in on. Sure. And moving forward with the conversation on digital real estate, but I'm, I'm curious because I know that you're an expert in the space and I always want to emphasize to people the, the amount of commitment that it takes if they're going to go on this journey of developing their brand, forming digital real estate, market research, I mean, just putting out content in general. And I'm just curious, how many hours a day do you feel like you spend dedicated to your craft? 
I mean, this is what I do for like all day. <laughs> like I had a period of time where I was getting up at like 4 a.m. just to get some deep work time in. So like it, I, I would say that it really does depend on you because you can like batch create content and like uh, digital, not digital real estate. What is it? Uh, market research, right? Doesn't have to be something that you do all at once. Mm-hmm. But I would say overall, it's definitely a continuous journey. It's not like you're gonna do market research one time and then be done with it, right? Your audience is always changing. Like you might decide that you don't want to do that exact thing, and then you need to do a little bit more research. So hours. Let's see how many hours I'm awake. Sixteen. <laughs> so probably a, a work day. You know what I'm saying? Like eight to ten hours per day, but it's definitely continuous. Like it's an everyday thing because this is what this is you. This is you, your brand, your account, whatever. Like, you got to be willing to put the work in no matter how long it takes, quite honestly. So, yeah. so with that being said, y'all, y'all heard the eight to 10 hours and the <laughs> daily thing. What do you do to stay consistent um, and to stay motivated? Because, I mean, just like with anything, you know, a lot of people, they feel burnout, you know, they get discouraged. But, I mean, we'll get to the discouragement part later. Um, but I, I'm curious for you, what do you utilize to help stay consistent and to stay motivated to do this every day for the amount of time that you're doing it every day. Yes. No. It's funny that you said that because literally this is the end of my break, right? Because I really had that. I was just like, I can't do this no more, man. Like, <laughs> this is a lot. Taking a regular break definitely a thing, right? Um, sometimes they can be short, like just one day. Sometimes, like this one was longer. This one was a full week where I really just stepped back and like went back to consuming, right? where I was taking in information, going through my notes, like sorting out the fluff from the BS. And like, so that helps a lot. Um, But on a regular basis, honestly, it's just about like not getting too caught up in, in like knowing everything or figuring, you know what I'm saying? Like you're going to figure things out. So for me, being more selective about my clients, right? Like actually working with people whose um, vision I support, whose like brand I like, things like that help me stay motivated because cause then it's not just for the money, right? Then it's not just like I'm getting paid for this. It's actually like I'm helping somebody else make an impact. Um, and so that's definitely a big one. Um, and that was a more recent realization for me. Like at first it was just like, you know, anybody that needs a landing page, I can help them. I can fix them. But now it, it's more like, all right, what is their Perhaps. their long-term goal? You know what I mean? What is their, what in, type of impact do they want to have? What is this really going to look like? And so I think that's one thing too. Um, is really taking a step back and realizing that, like, you can help a lot of people, but do you want to help everybody, right? So being more selective, um, taking those breaks. I want to say that those are the, probably the biggest two, is, like, self-evaluation and just, like, taking breaks regularly, I think. Thanks, most definitely. And I also want to stress to everybody that, like, it's important, even though we're not professional athletes but just like any human if you look at them they have off seasons you know what I'm saying and it's the same thing for us and however unfortunately um, in society we're, that's not encouraged right? right but it's really crucial that you take those times out to have an off season and in your off season you're taking the time to, to rest, recoup, you're not worried about more so doing but as CJ mentioned you're worried, worried about taking in and self reflecting and you know, figuring out what you can do in your next off-season rolls around. Um, it takes right. a certain level of stuff. But I think that's why a lot of people suffer from burnout is because they don't take those necessary breaks that you need. Mm-hmm. You can't be on 100 all the time, you know what I mean? So, so yeah. <laughs> developing systems, putting systems in place to help with uh, help curb the effort that you have to put out, yeah. um, especially for being solopreneurs. Like, we can get caught up wearing a lot of different hats, right? And so it's important mm-hmm. to delegate as necessary. And CJ will tell you, whenever I need something for our website, I'm the first person there will be like, hey, I need this done. Like, I'm not even going to try to figure this out. Because at the end of like, you know, time is money, and I'd rather pay somebody to do something that, that takes something off of my plate than try to, you know, sit there and figure it out myself. Obviously, there's certain things that you do have to figure out on your own, but it's it's a, a matter of knowing what are your skills and what are not your skills. And if you have the means to be able to delegate those skills out, then that's what you need to do. That's also yeah help with uh, curbing and burnout and making sure that you're staying consistent and motivated by having people on your team or people that you can at least reach out to um, on a need need be basis to kind of help take those responsibilities off your shoulders. Absolutely. But kind of the same thing with consistency, I know that you mentioned earlier, um, having to deal with dips and sales or low points in business. And yeah. so I wanted 
to know your your thoughts and you know I'll share mine as well. Um, how do you manage dealing with the ebbs and flows of entrepreneurship and how do you stay you know motivated and consistent even through those times because even then that's that's even a more of it on your motivation because you feel like I'm doing this for nothing because I'm not seeing any monetary value being added to me for sure. right so I'm kind of curious uh, from your perspective how do you manage doing the during those ebbs and flows the high points and low points right I would say um, the first thing is honestly just expecting it like nothing can be hot forever you know what I mean like you're gonna be hot but you can't be hot all the time so you're automatically gonna have like lows and I think really just preparing for those things. Um, and you can be creative. Like that could be, you know, if you have a physical product, maybe releasing a digital product, maybe going to the education side of things a little bit more um, when those dips do happen. Because it, you, like, you don't know why the dip is happening. You know what I'm saying? It could be, like right now we're in a recession, right? So people don't got a lot of money to spend. And so that doesn't really have anything to do with your product, but maybe that is you need to angle it differently to be more of a necessity. Maybe you need to step back and, like I said, try to build a community or something around it. Like, so I think one is just expecting it. Um, the other part of that is, let me see. I don't know. Oh, just deal with, oh yeah, deal with it. Um, I don't know. Actually, can you re-ask the question? Because after I said that, I, I, I had a <laughs> Well, hopefully, like, this, this little bit that I'm about to give uh, will we'll give you some time to gather your thoughts. But I was just okay. going to re like the of expecting it. And as Brando said on our first episode, like, covering your own ass before you have to, right? And so with that, you, you have to – it, it kind of goes back to that value piece. You got to know the right. value that you add work that you do. And even if you aren't seeing the monetary result, we have to understand that good things take time and that everything in life is the long, is like, it's a, it's a long race. It's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And so some day, mm -hmm. sometimes you're going to see, like, even with just like runner's high, like if you think about running a marathon, like some points you're going to feel like, oh, this is easy. Other times yeah. you're going to be like, oh, I can't make it. You know what I mean? But it's, it's the will in your why that's what's going to carry you through those seasons of highs and lows and to kind of keep you level and consistent. But also, CJ brought up a good point. You can't avoid the low points. Like, that's just, like, part of the – that's the cost of playing the game, right? So yep. just – then when you end those high seasons that you're not getting too carried away, I talked about it before, but I, if you are worried about finances when it comes to the ebbs and flows, I highly recommend the book Profit First. I will say it every time I can because that book and the taking action on the book, right, not just reading yeah. it action on the book and putting those systems in place where I could manage myself through the low seasons and not have to come out of my personal pocket to keep the business afloat. It's critical. Definitely making sure that, that you're taking all those things into consideration and figuring out in your high season. It's not like expect the worst, you know, right. but just make sure the high season right now is where I need to deploy this capital at to make sure that I can sustain myself you know, when things do happen, it's just like with anything in life, you don't want it to happen, but you got to be prepared in case it does. Sure. Right. So um, I hope that kind of jogged your memory, but it was just more so about yeah. going through those ebbs and ownership and how you maintain and handle it. For sure. No, no it definitely did. Um, two things, and they're very much related is also remembering your why, right? And having those goals, because at the end of the day, you started this for a reason. And so if that reason is strong enough, whatever it is and for me it's freedom like at the end of the day i want to be able to do whatever i want whenever i want with who i want right and so when i get to those points i'm like dang like i kind of want to give up the thing that i always tell myself is like what's the other like you spend so much time that you have this to life to be if i quit right now what is my life going to look like you know what i'm saying and oftentimes that <laughs> that is enough right there because like do i want to go back to working 40 hours a week for somebody else and do I want to have another grown adult telling me what to do right or when I can go pee or like whatever like those things bother me and so oftentimes that's enough but I think just for anybody like what is your why for some people it's their kids for some people it's like I said that that dream life that they want for some people is you know it could be anything but I think that needs to be really strong in order to carry you through because like this is not easy I'm just trying to say I know you know like it's not easy. <laughs> it's plenty of tears being shed, right? Frustrations almost every day. Like, so you really got to right. be, I'm going to say, built different, like, to handle this for a long period of time. So, 
you got to condition yourself really like even you with yourself. That. Well, look. You said remind yourself what? I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say remind yourself of like I said why. But go ahead. No, I was just about to say. I mean, you, you stress it, making sure that you you um also take care of your mental health through it too, right? Sure. Um, yeah. Just like with anything. And especially when it comes to this, you're going to fail more times than you succeed. It's literally like with anything in life, like, you know, I'm like investing with, with working in my career, in my field, and even with this business and other areas of life that you are going to fail more times than you succeed. But when you succeed, like those successes are going to be big enough to out trump all those failures. You know what I mean? So continue to fail forward and not just hold yourself back from the failures, but learn like genuinely take the time out to self reflect and learn from and see what you can do better in the future. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, like, I think one thing that I've noticed too, is just, I noticed when I started aligning myself to what I believe in and the content that I put out and the products that I release, I noticed a shift that I wasn't mm -hmm. noticing before. Like if, if you start do things for the right reason, again, like going back to stay true to yourself and your why. So for me, I'll be completely and honest with y'all, when I first started out, I was like, all right, I need to get these views, I need to get this like, right. I need to get this content. I'm looking at popping on here, but the content I put out, you know, isn't related to what I practice and what I preach, right? And right. so that's sustainable. Well, I'm not being true to myself. And then it's just like, you know what? I gotta make a shit. If I want the the black and brown community to live better lives, then I need to start putting out content and recipes or whatever that is to help make that shift that I wanna see and add right. that value. And then you know. Notice that when you align with what your true purpose is and what you actually believe in and practicing what you preach, that people will start to subscribe to it and not just people, but the right people, yeah. right? So when I noticed when I made that shift, I'm like, all right, y'all, I'm not doing anything else but plant-based recipes from now on out. Obviously, the views, the likes, and all that stuff dipped, but at the end of the day, I noticed an uptick in people, either followers or sales, yeah. you know, one or the other, right? And so... Yeah. You just have to realize, like, or just figure out what's important to you and what you're doing this for and make sure that you stay aligned with who you are and stay true to yourself because people will gravitate to that if they can see transparency and honesty. So there's definitely yeah. something I want to make sure that I talk to y'all, uh, at least plug into y'all minds to, to take away from this interview. But, uh, CJ, I wanted to kind of go back to the digital real estate piece and what are some of the biggest tips that you have for – maybe people who are looking to revamp so say you know i just talked about how i made the shift from from doing this to doing that when it comes to navigating as you previously mentioned like you've gone through shifts as well so how did you navigate your digital real estate presence going through those shifts and what are some recommendations that you have for some people doing the same thing honestly i say like, like when it happened to me the very first time i didn't have enough knowledge to do it right like now i know um one thing is even before that happens is that making sure like when you are posting content in any respect like build a list man like don't just rely on followers like build an actual list get people's emails get people's phone numbers um and then i think that when you revamp tell people you know what i'm saying like don't make it a quiet thing like really announce it talk about it like you know we're about to redo the website or we're about to redesign whatever like get people involved in the process too I've seen that like uh, a lot of people build in public and that's a really it's a really cool trend that's happening but it works really well like when people see your process and like the behind the scenes it gets them excited about things so i would say like definitely announcing it um try to shoot for like seven days before at the very minimal right but then also if you can find a way to make audience part of your event oh that works so well like, I remember when we were, um, for Smoke Break specifically, when we were, like, changing up the labels and stuff like that, I was literally posting, like, polls on Twitter, polls on Snapchat, asking people, like, which one do you like better? Like, do you like the white or do you like the clear, you know? People love that. And they feel like they get to be a part of it, yeah. And so, um, definitely that. And honestly, I think that that's really just it. It's about, like, keeping people involved in your revamp. Because just because you're revamping doesn't really mean you're starting over, you know? Like you said, there's definitely going to be some fall off, but not a bad thing. Like you're aligning with the right audience. You feel me? So the people that stay, those yeah. are the people that's really rocking with you. And the people that leave, like, oh, well, like you, you, you weren't providing value in their life. And that's not a bad thing. Like that's just the reality of the situation. And so 
I would say that's really the biggest thing is just like announcing it and making other people part of it. And I think like you would have a really successful revamp doing that. Facts, and that, that's really uh, major. And I'm glad that you brought that up. The importance of just asking your audience. I mean, y'all see me on on here. Like I be, I used to ask y'all like, hey, what recipe I want to see this week, and like really yep. take your feedback and consideration, do polls and things of that nature. Uh, and all that's great. So, however, I had to realize, like, you know, not a lot of people are educated on plant-based eating. So, it's just, like, I'm trying to, you know, do something different. But even when it comes to merch and different products, I'm like, hey, y'all rocking with this? Y'all rocking with that? It's important because at the end of the day, this you putting this out for, for your audience. And so, you want to make sure that it's going to be something that's going to be receptive to your audience. Yep. So, I definitely appreciate you sharing that that piece of it. And to be honest with you, I was just going to ask kind of like a final question is if yep. – you were going back and starting from the very beginning with all the knowledge that you have now. Go back and tell yourself, like, what is one thing that you would tell yourself with all the knowledge that you have now to you just starting this journey? Or maybe top three things if, if one is, okay. is two. Um, one, I would say just start. Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> one, I would say just start, like, because a lot of people. Like you say, get that analysis paralysis where it's like, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? I don't know. And then they like never put anything out. And I've been, I've been fault to that too. Not necessarily with smoke break, but just what other things I'm trying to do. I like overthink it to the point where I can talk myself out of it. And like that could have been something that somebody really wanted. You know what I mean? So um, right. definitely just start. Um, oh, I know everybody heard this one, but like your network is your network. Yeah. I would have networked with a lot more people. You know what I'm saying? Because I've, I've had a good amount of relationships that of people I've, I've met online, like never met in person. And like we text or we talk like pretty often, like some people, like my actual friends, you know what I'm saying? And so um, I think that and going back to something we were talking about earlier, that can sometimes help with motivation too. like having other people to talk to that sure. have either been in your position. Yeah. Or just in general, just understand what you're going through because like as an entrepreneur, talking to people who aren't doing those things regularly sometimes it's hard because they don't see the vision or they just don't understand what you're talking about like they're like bro like it's not that hard or whatever but people that's actually going through it they get it and so sometimes they can give you and started just a little bit more motivation but like coming from a place that you know is valid basically so um let's see that was number two number three mm. Telling myself at the beginning. Honestly, I fell victim to the whole sell, sell, sell thing too. So I would just really say, Thanks. yeah, focus on your income more than your money. I mean, your impact. Sorry, more than your income. Like when it comes to like again, what problem are you solving? Like how are you impacting people's lives? And I think if I was able to do that in the beginning, I would have avoided a lot, <laughs> so many problems and so many just like Thanks. trials that I had. Yeah. So those three, those three for sure. What did I say? Just start. Networking your networks and then uh, impact over income is my top three. Yeah. Yes, the outcome will definitely bring the income. <laughs> That's important to cool. remember, y'all. I guess cool. for me, I'm going to give my top three and I'm going to just, they kind of piggyback off of yours. But the first thing I'll say is with, when it comes to just start, your ideas and your gift is time sensitive, right? right? So it's very important that when you have the idea and you believe that it's something that is really going to impact other people that you act on it in the now. Mm -hmm. And if you, this whole concept of later is not really something that's, you know, the, not to, you know, get on my soapbox, but it's just like, if you look at the original, there wasn't any concept of later. It was like, everything was always in the now. We're always in the present. Mm -hmm. Right. So it goes the same thing. Ideas have not changed since the beginning of time. Your ideas are always in the present. They need to be acted on in the present. Mm -hmm. And so, because if you don't act on it in that time frame that's been allotted to you, then God going to give that, that idea to somebody else nope. who's going to act on it. So you can <laughs> exactly. be sure that you being proactive with the gifts that you got. I wouldn't say to be discouraged by the work either, because that's something that I struggle with. Mm -hmm. It's like, bro, sometimes I just do not want to put in all that effort, right? Absolutely. And, no. and, but there is, like, learn how to to not take shortcuts, but work smart and not hard. Yeah. So I would say that would be the second thing that I'd take away for somebody that's just starting in is like, obviously your dreams are time sensitive, so act now. Mm -hmm. um, I would also 
also say stay true to yourself you know we talked about that a lot stay true to yourself stay true to your vision and don't try to conform to what may be popular on social media and if i had to pick the third thing that i would tell myself in the beginning when i started this journey is definitely continue to shoot for the stars right and have those big expectations but like just make sure sure that you are prepared and anticipate the worst because like and knowing how to deal with those those things so i think i wish i'd have known in the beginning that failure was a part of the game and like off rip you're not gonna be successful obviously it's like it's easier said than done right like going in i knew this but i'm like oh yeah that's not gonna happen to me right you know what I'm saying? don't go in with that mentality so i say that those are my three things it's like definitely be prepared for the failures like obviously be confident don't be scared but just know that it could happen to you too like there's when it comes to certain things in life, like nobody is an exception where it's just like you go and take off off rip and continue to be on that trajectory, like know how to deal with those things up before going into it. I think it'd be important if you have experienced some failures in the past to make sure that you really learn from those and think about those and what you could do differently and it, figure out how it ties into what you're trying to do now. Right. So I would say that those are my three things like really, really make sure that you're analyzing yourself and learning from the failures that you've had in the past. And if you can, you know, make sure that you can create an environment of extreme peace and healing around you. Like make sure you take the time out to heal mentally from other past traumas, because we don't realize how those past traumas come into our, our business, right? And how we operate in our business. So make sure that y'all are taking the time to heal for real. Make sure that y'all are taking the time out to especially when you're going on this journey because it will be critical for how your business is going to function if it's a reflection of you right and brando talked about this the last episode you are a representation of your brand right so at the end of the day if you got together your brand can't be together and those i would say maybe insecurities or those flaws they're going to show up in your business if you don't handle them you know before you start um or while you're in the process of starting because you obviously want to take action and continually inspect and adapt y'all i know that was more than three but hey, y'all, that's we got okay. some extra that was <laughs> So, hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I know we had a couple of people join the chat. I appreciate y'all for tapping in. I'm going to just remind everybody that you, if you guys have any questions for me and CJ, you can leave them in the comment section or the question bubble. But I'm going to go ahead and move into kind of the last thing that yeah. I want to talk about. So we've talked about the gems. We've talked about the journey. We've talked about digital real estate. Is there any last remarks that you want to leave to the people before we close it out? Mm. It was actually a couple of things that you said earlier that I wanted to like piggyback yeah. off of. The Go ahead. I remember what they do, what they is. Um, let's see. Well, just now you said something. You talk. Damn, I should have said it, but I didn't want to interrupt you earlier. <laughs> that's what. That's what it's all. Um, it's. It's all good. I mean, so. While, while you're thinking about it, I mean, I'm going to just go ahead and make a quick announcement if that's cool with you. And hopefully yeah, that will yeah. spark uh, you to leave the final remarks for everybody. So I know I posted on my story earlier this week. And as a lot of you know, I just released my second cookbook, The Best of Chef's Move, um, which highlights some of my some of the 15 most well-received recipes on social media, looking at TikTok, Instagram, and Pinterest. Some of the recipes that people like to said they wanted to see in the comments. I also posted on the story that after this month, that that book will actually no longer be available. So I'm going to talk, talk to you guys about the reasoning behind it. Um, it kind of goes into what we talked about in this interview, staying true to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, going back after reading it, I put it out because I genuinely wanted, you know, some people really want those recipes. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Like, I'm going to give it up to y'all because I have put this contact out or this content out. However, it's not what I'm aligned with now because that content was like, you know, six months ago, like a year ago, right? And it's not who i am or what my brand represents now and again for you guys who don't know for so culinary is dedicated to developing health and wellness in the black and brown communities whether that's spiritual mental emotional or financial health right and so when it comes to what i'm trying to align myself with it's all the recipes in that book are not plant-based right and that's that's my mm -hmm. message of trying to promote healthy eating within our communities as well so we can foster enhance spiritual, mental, emotional, and financial growth in our lives, right? And so because of that, I'm only leaving it up for this month, and I will take it down after this month. It will no longer be available for sale on the website. However, once more plant-based books come, which there are some in development, y'all, so stay tuned for that. Uh, once more of those come out, I might 
reconsider putting it back up. But for now, um, at the end of December, the beginning of January, so January 2nd, that'll be exactly a month after I released it, it will no longer be available for purchase. So if you really want a copy of that book, I would highly suggest that you get it now before they are no longer available. So I just want, I wanted to um, to everybody, but I don't know if that gave you some time to regather your thoughts for your final remarks to the people. Yes, no, it definitely did. Uh, one thing was you were talking about earlier about authenticity, bro. And, like, I would say, honestly, definitely align your brand with it, but, like, the internet will tell you. The internet will tell you if you're faking in a second. So, like, that's the other thing, too. Like, definitely you just want to be true to yourself because, like you said, it's easier to sustain. Because if you're trying to be something you're not, like, it's going to be harder for you to keep up that image, especially on days where you like, I don't feel like doing this. Like, so definitely that. Um, but also, like, just know that, like, you don't want to be that person to get caught, like, you know what I'm saying, in the comments, <laughs> and people going crazy talking about you not, you, know, you don't know what you're talking about, or you're lying, or, like, you do not want that to happen to you, because it's hard to recover from that, because, like, even if you delete the post, somebody could have screenshotted it, that could be anywhere on the internet, you feel right. like, so just take that into consideration that, like, things normally stay on the internet forever, and think about that when you're, like, posting or doing whatever, that'd be the first thing, um, and the second thing is definitely don't be afraid to ask for help. I would probably add that to one of my three is because, like, especially in the beginning, you don't know so much. Like, you don't even know what you don't know yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So find people, find, like, you know, like-minded peers, find mentors, whatever you got to do. Like, get in the, in the spaces, in the rooms to, like, talk to like-minded individuals because it literally, it helps you so much. Just hearing other people's perspective, hearing their journey, hearing, like, what they got going on. Because, like, just to give you perspective, right, um, I have, I had a friend, right, who does, it's, it's some other stuff, like, she does stuff with Notion, but she charges $15,000 to do this, right? Now, I don't know anybody <laughs> that charges $15,000 for anything, but just, like, actually knowing somebody who does that, it makes it feel like it's so much more possible. Like, I could get to the point where I could charge something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely ask for help, but also just grow your network, and don't be afraid to ask people. And I think that relationship sparked because I watched a YouTube video. And then I found her Instagram and I asked the question about it. I was like, yo, I didn't understand this. Like, could you explain it more? And now we talk like once a week. You feel me? So, yeah, that will just leave it. Leave it at that. Ask for help, please. That's, that's, <laughs> yes, yes. And I mean, I'm going to just leave my last two sentences. Just like if I could give another tip for y'all. Let people lay their cards out to you first before you, you respond. And when it comes to pricing yourself, I know that's one thing. Like mm. some downplay, like what what actually we do is worth, right? Mm -hmm. And so one rule of thumb that I picked up from, you know, just research and things of that nature is that let people tell you what their budget is first, especially if you're offering a service. If you can do it for a product, too, that's great. Um, but especially for a service, like let people tell you what their budget is first and use that as like the conversation and kind of work toward that from there. Because you you might in your head, you might like, oh, I'm gonna be happy if I can get $50 off of this. But they like, oh, I want to give you 500 you know what I'm saying, for doing that. And you're like, wow, I would have, you would have missed out on that extra $450 blessing if you would have just, you know, if you would have been like, oh, yeah, my price is my price. Yep. So I always encourage people to let people give their cards out first. And the first question is, is what is your budget for it? And in the flip side of that, say if you're expecting $50 for this, but they don't want to give you 25 then you can put it in that minimum, like, well, I can't do anything less than 50 right? right? So just to make sure that, um, I want to and I, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to ask. Go ahead, go ahead. What you said. Go ahead. Okay, so that, the other thing I was going to say is, like, when it comes to services specifically, like, please understand that all money is not good money. Like, you will have bad clients. <laughs> you literally will. And so, in the beginning, it's going to be hard for you to differentiate and know, like, those signs. But, like, as you're going through and as you're working, set up boundaries for yourself. You feel me? Like, set up boundaries, set up just, like, an expectation of how your clients should act because you're providing the service. Like, yeah. Not to say that you should be cocky and arrogant about it, but, like, you're helping somebody do something. So definitely don't accept, like, they shouldn't be treating you any type of way. Like, this is a mutual relationship. So I would definitely leave off, leave off with that. Like, vet your clients before you work with them because, like, it happens. I, I've had to fire a client this year, like, and everything was cool in the beginning, but you got to be able to set those boundaries for yourself. So that that's the last thing. I'm just that because you reminded me of that yes hey i'm here for it i'm here for it that is a, definitely a good gem y'all to keep it track uh, all money is good money be selective of who you work with <laughs>
Yeah, well, hey, again, like, obviously, it's your second time coming on. If y'all haven't checked out the first one, I highly recommend that y'all go back and check that one out as well, as well as episode one of For the Soul Podcast and really any of the other Hill Tip Friday Lives that we've put out. There's a lot of gems that are dropped across a variety of topics. Um, but before I get my clothes out, CJ, um, let the people know what you have going on. Oh, man, I do got some stuff coming on. I ain't gonna lie. So um, it's not released yet, but my goal is just like, just so y'all know my impact is like, I want to help everybody be able to sell online easier. So what I got coming on for next year, probably, because I got to focus on clients this year, is um, like trainings, templates, like a lot of stuff to just help y'all do this stuff easier. Because I know it's hard to figure that stuff out. So um, feel free, I would say, follow me, like, whatever. Let me know what you're struggling with online because, like, you have to actually be able to, to create products that are actually going to help, right? And they're not going to be expensive. Like, it's going to be something everybody can, um, can definitely participate in. But let me know because that's, that's my mission right now, and that's my goal, and I just figured that out. So however I can help you all sell better online, make products, whatever the case may be, hit me up and let me know. That's what I'll say. Yes. Perfect. Hey, y'all, please. Show her some love by following her and reaching out to her if you need any help with your digital real estate, especially if she was so gracious with her time today when speaking with us and also the preparation leading up to this podcast um, episode. And so I'll just leave it for me as some things that I have in the pipeline. If you are on my close friend story, I am about to show some mock-ups for some VHM merch that I have, and I definitely like your feedback. As we talked about, talking to your consumer audience is important. So yeah. definitely be looking out for my story for that because I'm hopefully going to launch that during Black History Month in 2023 for the Soul Podcast. The goal is to do bi-weekly episodes in 2023. So definitely be on the lookout for those. I'm definitely okay. calling these out a little more consistently. Um, I would say that's the main thing. Also, book number three is in production, y'all. It's going to be the first fully plant-based book. So uh, more details about when that's going to be dropped, hopefully in the new year. But definitely be on the lookout for that as well. And, yeah, just stay locked in to any new content, recipes, whatever the case may be. And you know where to find me if you need me, y'all. There you go. All right, CJ. Thank you you so much for tapping in. Um, We definitely appreciate all the gems. I hope that y'all took down some really good notes. Like I said, the replay will be available on YouTube. Also, Apple, Spotify will have the audio playback. So, again, Thank you so much, CJ. Thank you for everybody tuning in. I hope this was fruitful and beneficial, and I will see y'all soon. Peace.